they might have to start turning people away here at a packed Peninsula High School for tonight's epic showdown, which will determine who walks away with the South Sound Conference Championship. Good evening, good evening everybody, and welcome to Fish Basket 2019 Round 2 as the Gig Harbor Lady Tides take on the Peninsula Lady Seahawks. I'm Chance Busey alongside Kelly Busey bringing you tonight's action live on KGHB-FM. Both of these teams sit atop the South Sound Conference at 12-1, and heading into this final game of the regular season. For the defending state champion Tides, it's simple. A win over rival, Peninsula would clinch the conference again for the third straight year, and doing it in enemy territory would be icing on the cake to another phenomenal regular season. For Peninsula, a win tonight would be the first win over rival Gig Harbor in the seniors' careers. It would also be a win over the defending state champs and the first time the Seahawks have won conference in 22 years. The Tides roll into Peninsula on the back of senior captain and Utah signee Brenna Maxwell. We sat down with her as well as coach of the Lady Tides, Megan Murray, before tonight's game. Here's what she had to say. Uh, it went well. I mean, we just focused on things that were priority um, with just a couple things and adjustments we wanted to make with them, but then also focusing on just our own style and our own game and not changing too much um, and just playing how we're capable of playing. Once the schedule came out this season, I looked at, at this last game of the regular season, Gig Harbor Peninsula. I said, you know, this is going to be – the deciding game maybe of the uh, South Sound Conference. When the schedule came out and you saw that you were playing Peninsula last, what, what was going through your head? Uh, not too much at first, actually. Um, early on, I knew us, Peninsula, obviously, North Thurston and Timberline would all be up in that mix. And then when North Thurston got us here at home, um, they played extremely well, so I expected them to, um, you know, maybe all four of us to kind of be jumbled up. Um, but, um, you know, they kind of fell off a little bit, and we improved a lot and were able to take care of some things. And obviously the second half of the season, we just started to separate ourselves, and you saw more and more that it would come down to us in Peninsula. Tate McReynolds sitting out Tuesday's game, cleared for practice uh, yesterday. Um, what do you expect her impact to be tonight? Uh, she's ready to go. Um, she hated every moment of sitting out and being bored and not even being able to be in the gym. So she's ready, feels good today, um, and I think will be a nice boost for us again. Um, she just adds some athleticism um, and, and stuff to our rotation. So it's, it's good to have her back for this game for sure. Leading up to this game, newspaper articles coming out, Bell versus Brenna, the final regular season showdown. Outside of that, what's going to be the deciding factor in tonight's game? Yeah, you know, I know they try to hype that stuff up, which is, I mean, it's cool. I mean, you know, they're, they're great friends and grew up together playing basketball and here they are in a, you know, a rival game that means a championship for a league title. Um, but honestly, you know, I expect it to be physical. Um, and I, you know, expect it to, um, you know, be a battle every possession and, you know, possibly like the last game, just come down to who has the ball last in their hands. You know, obviously we don't want it to be that way, um, you know, and we kind of have some plans for some different things. But, um, you know, we're two great teams and we're going to battle and fight to the very end for sure. Head coach of the Lady Tides, Megan Murray, thanks so much for sitting down with us pregame here on KGHP. Best of luck tonight. Thanks, Chance. Go Tides. And now we sit down with senior captain Brenna Maxwell of the Gig Harbor Tides. Brenna, great season so far. Both teams headed into this one 12-1. and Tonight's going to decide the conference championship. What have the Tides been doing this week? How have they been preparing for this matchup? Um, we've really been focusing on uh, ourselves mostly. Um, we've watched a lot of film on the past game, and we've made a little bit of adjustments based on uh, Peninsula's offense and the defense they've run. But we've been really focused and dialed in, and we're ready to go tomorrow or today. A newspaper article coming out um, about this last fish basket regular season matchup from John Manley. Um, how do you deal with all the hype, and how do you keep from letting that distract you? It's just a game. I mean, it doesn't matter how many people show up. It doesn't matter like what the news are going on is going saying. Um, at the end, it's about who scores the most points. And 
you know, like I said earlier, we've been focusing on that, on ourselves, and just making sure that we're, you know, physically and mentally ready and in the best shape possible. And finally, the obvious question, your senior year, your last matchup with Peninsula, what's going through your head? Um, it's kind of happy, sad. I mean, you want to you want to end on a win because, you know, it's kind of it's the last go around and whoever wins this one kind of, you know, gets all the marbles. So, um, I mean, we're locked in. It is kind of sad, though, because the last time, you know, I'll be playing against Bell and some other people I've been playing with since I was little. But, you know, we, we, everyone wants to win. Both teams want to win it a lot. I think it's going to come down to who wants it more. Well, we're very excited to call this intense uh, conference championship game, essentially. Uh, Brendan Maxwell, senior captain of the Lady Tides, thanks for sitting down with us pregame. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. Go Tides. The Tides are led by Brennan Maxwell, who leads all of 3A in scoring, averaging 25.6 points per game, according to Max Prep Sports. The last time these two teams played, back on January 9th, Gig Harbor won by one point, thanks to a last second shot from Brennan Maxwell. Will we see the same tonight? Will history repeat itself? We sat down with the man determined to change that, Peninsula head coach Mike Schick, as well as senior captain Bell Frazier before tonight's game. Here's what they had to say. Yeah, uh, you know, this week is a little goofy playing Tuesday, Thursday. It kind of cuts into the normal routine, but we had a good practice Saturday, um, Monday with film, and then, you know, we went down to Timberline on Tuesday, played a, a tough Timberline team. They're, they're better than their record. They've gone through a lot of injuries this year. Um, it was their senior night, eight seniors out of the nine girls that played. So they had a lot of emotions, running high, playoff hopes on the line, everything like that. So um, it was good for us, you know, just trying to get through that game on Tuesday and then being able to focus on, you know, practice last night to be able to work on things for tonight and stuff like that. So um, it's been good, you know, start of the new semester. It's all sorts of goofy stuff. But um, at the end of the day, the girls are just excited to play ball. Last time these two teams matched up, a heartbreaking one-point loss for the Seahawks. Um, what have you guys been working on this time around to make sure that it's maybe a one-point win or, or even bigger? Sure. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, heartbreaking is a tough word. Um, you know, if it was kind of back and forth for a little bit there, but we were in control of that game for the majority of it, um, all the way until the last 10 seconds. I said it was a great 31 minutes and 50 seconds, and in that last 10 seconds, you know, Maxwell hit a great shot, and it was what it was. Um, but we're just continuing to try to clean up the little things throughout, through you know our defensive rebounding, through taking care of the ball a little bit better, to making our free throws that we practice every single day of practice, you know, through the whole year and stuff like that. So we just continue to try to work on the little things. You know, nothing in particular for Geek Harbor. It's it's just stuff that we're trying to work on for every team we play against. You know, no matter if it's one of the top teams in state or you know one of the bottom teams in our league and stuff like that. We want to treat every game the same and, and work on those things we need to work on and finally bell frazier's senior year the big story this week bell versus brenna um outside of that what are the what are the big factors in this one what's uh, what's going to be the impact for peninsula to come out away with a win today yeah i mean they're both great players it's it was a fantastic article you know they always do a great job and and they are two superstars in their own right and in games like this those tend to cancel each other out. So then it becomes the X factors. Who's going to step up? Who's going to knock down big shots? Who's going to hit timely shots? And, and kind of stuff like that. So, you know, this time I'm, I'm expecting a lot more from my sophomores. Um, Lindsay and Pipe were kind of lost in the weeds a little bit. You know, the, the lights were a little bit brighter. And, you know, they're still, you know, I got to remind myself, they're still sophomores. They're still learning. They're, they're not as seasoned as some of the upperclassmen and stuff. But the stuff they bring to the table is fantastic. But again, you know, those those seniors, Taryn Richter and, and Esther, she, you know, she does a lot of things on the defensive end that she doesn't get a lot of credit for. Um, but she chipped in quite a bit last time we played them. But you know, I know Renee Doss is hungry to get out there and, and Karen McKinney, those. It's the X factors, I think, are going to make the big difference tonight. All righty, and we look forward to conjoined interview at halftime with Piper Bauer and Lindsey Lavrovich. Mike Schick of the Peninsula Lady Seahawks, thanks for sitting down this pregame here on KGHP FM. Uh, best of luck tonight. Appreciate it. Go Hawks. And now we sit down with Peninsula senior captain, Bell Frazier. Bell, it's the last regular season fish basket matchup between you, Brenna, and the Gig Harbor Tides. What's going through your head? I mean, last game was just so close and we still got a lot of just, we just really want this win. And so we're just focused on the win. <laughs>
and all the media hype. Uh, John Manley coming out with a great fish basket article. Uh, you and Brenna, the feature uh, athletes in that. How do you stay not distracted this week leading up into all this like fanfare and, and the big game? I mean, you kind of just, well, I kind of try to stay off of social media because that really hypes the game up a lot more than, I mean, it's a big game. But we can't let it get to us, so you just got to ignore it and keep your head down and focus. So. And finally, how do you think the team has been preparing this week, all the distractions? It's a different schedule, playing on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, how's the team been preparing for this big game? I mean, for the beginning of the week, we're just focused on Timberline because we're taking it one game at a time. But we're ready, I think. We're all really hyped, really hungry. So it's almost dinner time. <laughs> all right. Well, we're really excited to call this one. Uh, Bell Frazier, senior captain of the Peninsula Lady Seahawks, thanks so much for sitting down with us at KGHP pregame. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. The Lady Seahawks have three top 20 scorers in 3A play. Number five, Bell Frazier with 16.9 points. Sixth ranked, Lindsey Lavrovich with 16.2. And 17th ranked, Piper Bauer with 11.8. They will look to break through Gig Harbor's defense, which has only given up 29 points per game since their last matchup on January 9th. We'll be right back with starting lineups and keys to the game. You're listening to Fish Basket Rivalry Basketball on KGHB FM. And welcome back to a capacity crowd here at Peninsula High School for tonight's Fish Basket game. Top two teams in the South Sound Conference duking it out here in the final game of the regular season. Both Gig Harbor and Peninsula coming into this one 12-1. and one. And I'm joined by Kelly Busey, the Peninsula Boys broadcaster, who will be calling the next game on this doubleheader here on KGHPFM. Kelly, welcome. Good to be here. This is crazy atmosphere. Love this kind of atmosphere. This is what high school sports should be. Oh, absolutely, 100%. So you got some stats down there. What are you seeing tonight? Well, the key to the game tonight, I think, is how it's going to be on the offensive side of the ball. If the teams are going to run, if the teams are going to ring the score up. Uh, we know last time that one point lost 51-50, uh, Peninsula was held to about 15 points under their season average of 65 points. Uh, Big Harbor doesn't score that many normally. They average about 54 points per game. So we'll see what happens on the offensive side of the ball. That we will. Again, this is Bell versus Brenna, final showdown here in the regular season. These teams do have the potential to meet up twice more in the playoffs, both in the regional tournament and in the state tournament. Both of these teams, top ranked teams in the RPI for WIAA. So it's very realistic that we could have a couple more fish baskets right here on KGHB. I think, I think the balance for Peninsula is going to be a little bit of a difference. Give them a little bit of the edge. They have three scorers in double digits for uh, average scoring. Uh, Gig Harbor leans a lot on Brenda Maxwell. We'll see if uh, if somebody like Sydney Langworthy can step up and give some support to Brenna. Again, a absolutely packed house. I think they're going to have to start turning people away pretty soon, don't you think? I just spoke with the fire chief sitting not too far from me, and uh, he had no worries. <laughs> <laughs> good. Always good to see the girls getting some love here. Two of the top teams in the state about to duke it out. And this is sure to be one of the one of the best fish basket rivalry games maybe in program histories. I can't think of two more tough, tough opponents for the either side. Huge game. I have not seen the gym this packed in probably 20 years. And we'll step aside for the national anthem performed by the Peninsula Seahawk Band and Megan Webster.
Great job from Megan Webster and the Peninsula High School Band. The Tide student section kind of sandwiched in across the court from us between the student sections of Peninsula and the Peninsula Band. Kind of an interesting arrangement here, but we will see uh, how things hold up as starting lineups are about to be announced. Great showing there by both student sections. Just packed here tonight. This is beautiful. Starting lineups for the visiting Tides in all blue tonight is going to be number 10, a six-foot senior, Brenna Maxwell. Number 11, a 5'10 junior, Abby Emery. Number 14, a 5'3 senior, Megan Edwards. Or excuse me, sophomore Megan Edwards. Number 23, a 5'2 senior, Sydney Langworthy. And number 30, a six-foot one senior post player and co-captain, Grace Neal. It looks like for Peninsula, the starters are going to be number two, a 5'8 sophomore, Lindsay Lavrovich. We've got a halftime interview with both her and Piper Bauer. You want to stick around for that, as well as your Lunchbox Laboratory trivia question at the half. So after Lindsay Lavrovich, it's going to be number 13, Esther Papulis, a 5'6 senior. Number 21, that 5'6 sophomore, Piper Bauer, the other sophomore sensation. Number 24, a six foot one senior, Taryn Richter. And of course, one of the greatest players to ever wear the Peninsula jersey, number 35, a six foot senior, Belle Frazier, who's committed to play to Portland State next week. And Frazier, Frazier, such an impact player. 16.9 uh, average scoring, but how about nine and a half rebounds a game, too? We'll see if Gig Harbor can maybe keep her out of the paint a little bit, keep her off of the uh, off the boards. Jim has definitely come alive here tonight. Peninsula in all white tonight. White shorts, white shirts, I green give a, letters. Got to give a shout out to Piper's shoes before we even start here. Oh, she's wearing two different shoes. She got, okay, what color is that? We had a debate on that the other week. It's like tennis ball yellow, but it's it's also green. What is that? I is see a little green? too much Oregon duck there. Oh, yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. There's a little, the orange Nike swoosh, though. That's standing out. In the circle for Peninsula, it's Lindsay Lobrovich. For the Tides, it's Brenna Maxwell. Tides going from right to left to open things up. Hawks going from left to right. Students are ready to go. Ball up in the air and pulled down by eventually Grace Neal for the Tides. Big Harbor with the opening possession. Brenda Maxwell guarded by Esther Papulis at half court. She works it up to the perimeter. Gives it over to the far side to Langworthy. She has some space. Decides to pull up beyond the arc. Banks it off the rim. No good. Pulled down by Papulis and the Seahawks. Princeton opening in a man-to-man -man defense. Esther Papulis has her work cut out for her tonight against Maxwell. Over to the near corner to Lavrovich. She's guarded by Langworthy. Lavrovich drives left. Pump fake. Gives it over to Piper Bauer up top. Bauer directing traffic. 11 to shoot. Gets it into Taryn Richter at the free throw line. She's guarded by Grace Neal. She steps left. Gives it over to Lavrovich. Over to Bauer in the far corner. Pulls up for three off the rim. No good. Pulled down by Sidney Langworthy. Into the hands of Maxwell. Now up to Megan Edwards. Shortest player on the court come down with that rebound in traffic. Edwards guarded by Lavrovich up top. That's going to be a good matchup to watch tonight as Brenna Maxwell versus Esther Papulis. Maxwell drives right, puts up a shot over Frazier. She deflects it into the hands of Grace Neal. Rebound gig Harbor. Now into Abby Emery. She stops her dribble in the paint, gives it out to Maxwell at the free throw line. Back over to Emery at the baseline, guarded by Frazier. Up top now to Sidney Langworthy. Pulls up from distance. No good. Avoids the shot clock. And eventually pulled down by Lindsey Lobrovich and the Seahawks. We're going the other way. Long up court pass to Piper Bauer. Nearly loses the handle on it. But she recontrols it and works it back up top. Dishes it into Belle Frazier. She's guarded by Brenna Maxwell. She goes left. Give and go to Taryn Richter. Shot up. No good. But Taryn Richter goes to the line to shoot a free throw. Interesting. The tides are on man defense too. But it's Maxwell guarding Frazier. We don't see the opposite of that when the Seahawks are on defense. 6.28 here in the opening quarter. Taryn Richter to the line to put the first points on the board. King Harbor students making a lot of noise. Taryn Richter sees right through it, hits the first free throw. 1-0 your score here, Peninsula. Richter, second shot up and off the front of the rim, pulled down by Abby Emery for King Harbor. Megan Edwards pushing the ball up, gets by Lavrovich. Crosses over, goes right over to the far side, and into Maxwell, has a little bit of space on the perimeter. 
And a hook shot, no good. Maxwell gets the ball again and puts it back up and in for two points. 2-1, Gig Harbor leads. They're on defense. Piper Bauer takes it up for the Seahawks. She's met by Megan Edwards. Up court pass over to the near corner to Lobrovich. She's stuffed by Langworthy, picks up her dribble. And finally a foul on Langworthy. It's a little too aggressive on that defense. And Peninsula, Peninsula will inbound from the near corner. Until that whistle, the referee's been letting a lot of contact go, so I'm surprised they uh, called that one. Second team foul for the Tides. First one on Langworthy. As Lavrovich looks to Bell Frazier on the near side, she's guarded by Maxwell, gets by her, dishes it over to Taryn Richter, wide open for a shot, no good, was the four-foot jumper. And rebound goes to Brenna Maxwell. She's double teamed in the backcourt, needs some help. Finds Sydney Langworthy, gives it up to Edwards. Edwards crosses the half-court line, met by Lindsay Lavrovich, pulls up, elbow the free-throw line, shot no good in the hands of Papulis, gets it over to Frazier. Long up-court pass over to Piper Bauer, loses the handle on it, barely avoids the travel, Coach Murray wanting it. But loses the handle on it into the hands of Megan Edwards. Tide students showing up tonight. Shout out to the Tide students section. They're making some noise here early. Good defense on that steal by Megan Edwards. Very quick hands. Came up with the ball before it went out of bounds. And a foul away from the ball. It appears to be on Grace Neal underneath. It's going to be a pushing foul. It'll be the third team foul for Gig Harbor. First personal on Neal. Renee Doss checking into the game for Piper Bauer for the Seahawks. As Lavrovich gets it in the backcourt, she'll jog it up. She's met by Sydney Langworthy here with just over five minutes to go in the first quarter. Over to the near corner to Doss. She's guarded by Edwards up top to Frazier. Frazier gives it over to the far side to Esther Papulis, works around the perimeter over to Doss on the near side. Poked away by Brittany Maxwell, but right in the hands of Bell Frazier. Five minutes to go here in the first, 10 seconds to shoot for the Seahawks. Bell Frazier drives left, tries to find Taryn Richter, losing the handle on it, three to shoot, and Bell drives left, puts up a floater, gets floated by Maxwell, and that's gonna be a shot clock violation. Gig Harbor students erupting on the first Peninsula turnover. Maxwell looking to share the ball maybe too much. She had a good look at the hoop there, but uh, trying to get others involved in the game. I think she needs to take it to the rack. And that's exactly what we expected here tonight. Brenna Maxwell getting in the way of Bell Frazier. We'll see how the rest of those two get along tonight. Inbound to Grace Neal, now over to Edwards. Races by Lang er, Labrovich, up now to Abby Emery. Cross-court pass over to the far side to Langworthy, pulls up from beyond the arc and switches it home. 5-1, Tides lead, 4.35 left here in the first. Tides aren't used to being in the lead over Peninsula until the final seconds of the game, huh? <laughs> Indeed, Esther Papulis met by Grace Neal at the free throw line, and lots of contact. They're gonna slam Neal for the foul. Feet weren't quite set, and it looks like Tate McReynolds is going to check into the game for Neal. Tate missing the game on Tuesday. As Grace Neal takes a seat after that second personal foul, fourth team foul for the Tides, 428 on the board here in the first quarter. If she gets in foul trouble, they're going to miss her size inside there. She did foul out of last fish basket, so we'll see how she does in this one. Inbound pass poked away by Bell Frazier. All of the tides pointing in their direction, but the referee points the other way. It'll remain Peninsula basketball. Bell Frazier to inbound. Kara McKinney checks in for Taryn Richter for the Seahawks. Only two seconds gone after that. 426 left here in the first. Renee Doss now to inbound in front of the tides bench. And gets it up to Bell Frazier up top. She's guarded by Maxwell. Over to the far side to Papulis. Pump fake draws Tate off sides. Drives, puts up a shot, no good. Rebound, Brenna Maxwell. Maxwell fighting for every square inch of that basketball. Comes away with it, takes it up all the way to the court. Drives inside the perimeter, pulls up, elbow the free throw line, takes it off the back of the iron, and good. Four minutes remain here yep. in the first quarter. 7-1, your score, Gig Harbor leads. Got my eyes on Coach Schick to see if he wanted to call a timeout. He's going to let him play on. Esther Papulis gets it over to McKinney on the near side in the near corner to Lavrovich. Lavrovich spins around Sidney Langworthy, and they're going to call a foul on Sidney Langworthy. No, an offensive foul it's going to be. Charged with the elbow on that one. Lavrovich picks up her first personal foul, first team foul. Four team fouls for Gig Harbor, one for Peninsula. Everybody on the opposite side of the gym standing. Granted, 90% of them are students, but, man, lots of energy in this gym. 
Maxwell to take it up, guarded by Papulus in the pack court. She gets double teamed at the half court line, almost has it poked away by Lavrovich, but it goes off of Maxwell out of bounds. It'll be Peninsula Seahawk basketball. Dawson found in front of the Peninsula students. No reaction uh, at all from uh, Maxwell. It gets up and gets involved in the play now. Inbound goes to Lavrovich. She drives quick, puts up a shot contested by Langworthy. But Langworthy gets called for the foul. Lavrovich to the line to shoot two. 3.35 to go here in the first quarter. Lindsey Lavrovich ready to chip into the six point deficit. They trail Gig Harbor by six. Five team fouls now for the Tide. Sydney Langworthy, another foul prone player with her second personal foul as Lavrovich sinks the first of two free throws. Dia Berry checks in for Langworthy. Dia Berry, a 5'8 freshman. She's been quite a, she had a really good showing on Tuesday down low in the post. As Lavrovich hits the second. Score now 7 3. Gig Harbor leads. They have the ball. McReynolds, guarded by McKinney in the backcourt, tries to weave her way around the Peninsula defense, gives it over to Edwards, who crosses the half-court line. Over to Maxwell now, cross-court pass over to the near side for McReynolds, who pulls up just inside the perimeter, in and out, rebound Grace Neal. She gets it out to Megan Edwards, who fights for it, a scramble. Seahawks come up with it up to Lobberman. She races past Brenna Maxwell, but a foul. Are they gonna say it's before the shot or during the shot? That's gonna be a shooting foul, and Maxwell cannot believe it. And a foul on Maxwell. Crowd can't believe it at all. Six team fouls already here in the first quarter. We're just halfway done with it. First personal foul on Maxwell. I think Maxwell thought she had the ball clean, but it was a body foul. That's, I think, that's the, the point she missed from the referee. We shot from Lavrovich on her second trip to the free throw line. No good. All three of Peninsula's points coming from free throws. As Lavrovich up. And good with the second, four to seven now the score. Tides looking to extend this three-point lead here with three minutes left here in the first. Up to Abby Emery, finds Dia Berry, but right through her hand, she was wide open for a shot. Now over to Tate McReynolds with some space, and she hits the jumper. Nine to four now, just under three minutes to go here in the first quarter. Seahawks looking to cut into this five-point deficit. Doss now up top, guarded by Edwards. Over to the near side to Lavrovich. She's met by Tia Berry at the perimeter. Over to the near side to Bell Frazier. Works around. Maxwell puts up a shot. Lots of contact, no foul. You're and right on that. Lots of contact, no foul on uh, Frazier. Little surprised that they didn't nail Brenna Maxwell with a foul. And they're going to slam Kara McKinney with a foul. I I can't see. It must have been away from the ball. Ooh, I didn't ball see anything. Foul, right, but. yeah. But boy, Max uh, uh, Frazier was certainly sandwiched by two Tides players during her shot attempt. Megan Edwards takes it up for the Tides, double teamed by McKinney and Lavrovich. She passes left over to the near side to Maxwell. She's met by Papulis at the perimeter. Has a screen, gets it into Tia Berry, finding Abby Emery under the basket. Shot up, no good. And eventually pulled in by Berry, who gets it out to Maxwell. Three attempt, no good. And now into the hands of Tate McReynolds for the Tides. Third opportunity, no good. And poked out by a Gig Harbor player to be Peninsula Basketball. 2.14 left to go here in the first. 9-4 your score. Piper Bauer checking in for Esther Papulis for the Seahawks. We talked about this in a previous Seahawks game that they lost the rebound battle in the first half of the game, made an adjustment at halftime, and really dominated the second half. Bauer takes it up, met by Tate McReynolds at the perimeter. Behind the back move. Nice ball movement. Gets it over to Doss. Pulls up for three. Air mails it. And saved by McKinney, but into the hands of Tia Berry. Up to Brittany Maxwell. A long upcourt pass to Megan Edwards. But just a little too much as she had to adjust her route, but gives it over to Tia Berry, who drives and puts it up off the glass for two more points. Tides now lead by seven. It's 11 to four. 145 to go here in the first quarter. Piper Bauer drives right, puts up a shot, no good. There with the rebound was McKinney, but her shot gets blocked and now into the hands of Brenna Maxwell. Peninsula is playing a little frantic on offense. They need to slow it down, run a set play. Megan Edwards now met by Renee Doss. Over to the near side to Tate McReynolds, and she's going to travel with it. And it'll be Peninsula basketball. 127 left here in the first. Peninsula not getting deep into the shot clock at all. No set plays that they're running. Uh, I'd like to see a little more order from them on this offensive possession. Go ahead and follow us on Twitter at KGHP underscore FM, at Busey News, and at KBusey. 
for more info and reactions for today's game as Lavrovic pulls up for three off the back of the rim, gets her own rebound, dishes out to Bell Frazier. She pulls up two feet beyond the arc. That shot off the back of the rim. And Tia Berry and Britta Maxwell fighting for it. Eventually into the hands of Peninsula. Piper Bauer now tries for three. She got it tipped and into the hands of Megan Edwards. Edwards takes it up quickly, decides to pull up and give it to Britta Maxwell. Under a minute to go here in the first. Maxwell double teamed beyond the arc. Gives it over to Megan Edwards with a lot of room. Pulls up for three. No good into the hands of Labrovich on the near side. 45 seconds to go. Peninsula trying to cut into this seven point deficit. Gives it out to Piper Bauer for three. In and out. Pulled down by Maxwell. That was everything but in. Maxwell floats one up to Megan Edwards. She has a lot of space. Gives it over to Abby Emery. Over to the near side to Tate McReynolds. Now over to Maxwell. Drives through a couple defenders, but she travels with it first. <laughs> and the Peninsula ball baseline. Shot clock off now. 26.6 seconds remain in the first quarter. Maxwell was tied up by a couple of different Seahawk players as she drove the lane there. Could have been a travel. Could have been a foul. Piper Bauer with one shoe purple, one shoe a lot of bright colors. It is guarded by Tate McReynolds. 15 to go here in the quarter. And now to Kara McKinney at the elbow of the free throw line. Now over to Bell Frazier. Bell versus Brenna puts up a shot. No good after the double team pulled down by Doss. She puts it up and rattles it home. Winding seconds. Brenna Maxwell trying to put up a half court shot. Gets blocked by Renee Doss. And after one, I your score, Gig Harbor 11. Peninsula 6. We'll take a short underwriter break here on KGHBFM. You're listening to Seahawk Gig Harbor Basketball. And just kidding, we're back here at Peninsula High School. Point three seconds remain. A foul was called. A third Peninsula team foul. First personal on Renee Doss. Substitution now on the court for the Seahawks. It's going to be Lavrovich, Papulis, Doss, Bauer, and McKinney. And we'll restart action. And inbound pass goes to Brittany Maxwell. Gets a shot off. Almost. Actually, drew iron on that. Oh, wow. That well designed play. Epic. And yeah. now the end of the first quarter has come. We'll keep it here during the break. 11 to 6 year score. Again, go ahead and follow us on Twitter at KGHB underscore FM, at Busey News, and at K Busey for or, more info. For or better game. yet, use that hashtag. Hashtag fish basket. That's right. That's right. So I Peninsula on offense doesn't look very organized tonight. I think that they need to come down and run a really deliberate offensive set. They've just been frantic trying to get off three pointers, uh, some of them from well beyond the arc. Uh, no offensive continuity at all. So consequently, we have an 11 to 6 score. Gig Harbor on top uh, through one quarter. And go ahead and let us know where you're listening from. Go ahead and tweet us at KGHB underscore FM. Who knows? You could be the farthest listener tonight. We've had people listen from across the Atlantic Ocean. We've had people across the country. I know there's a lot of people back in Wisconsin that are probably uh, listening radio, to this Their radios are too cold tonight. <laughs> We, we hope our whole pack of Bowers is staying warm out there. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for listening all season. And we're excited to bring you playoff action as we're ready to go here in the second quarter. Inbound goes to Piper Bauer. 11-6 your score. Peninsula trails to start round number two. Ball now into McKinney at the free throw line, guarded by Emery. Spins around her, puts it up off the right hand, and in for two points. 11-8 your score. And there was that deliberate play set that we were calling for. Edwards guarded tightly by Doss in the backcourt. Gets it up to Abby Emery. Has some space inside. Back out to Tate McReynolds in the near corner. McReynolds finding Langworthy. Correction, Megan Edwards underneath, but she trips. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Seahawk basketball. 7.31 left here in the second quarter. Peninsula trailing 8-11 over Geek Harbor. Papulous skipping the ball up court. Over to Doss on the near side. Doss met by Tia Berry at the perimeter. Doss drives right. And over to Papulus on the far side. Papulus gets the screen, drives right into paint, loses the handle on it, but they're going to call a foul on Gig Harbor. Well, I agree with the foul, but I don't agree it was a shooting foul. I think it was well on the, uh, on the floor. Coach foul Murray not, not happy at all. Foul going to be on Tia Berry, the freshman, her first. Seventh team foul for the Tides. Peninsula now in the bonus as Papulus misses the first of two free throws. Papulus, second shot up, and dead fish dead. off the back of the iron here in the fish basket. Dead fish. 
as Maxwell gets the rebound, pushes it up for the Tides, gives it over to Emery, back out to Maxwell. Cross-court pass over to the far side to Tia Berry. Now up top to Megan Edwards, pulls up for three, no good, into the hands of Bell Frazier. Seahawks pushing it up. Frazier taking it coast to coast, puts it up off the right hand and in off the glass. Bell Frazier uses her strength on that possession. One point ball game. Tides with that one point edge, they have the ball. 6.45 to go here in the second quarter. Maxwell guarded by Papulus up top. She drives left and stolen away by Bell Frazier. Frazier with Maxwell behind her, puts it up and in. Seahawks lead 12 to 11. What a great start uh, for the, to the second quarter for the Seahawks squad and uh, now a, co a coach timeout. Timeout, Gig Harbor. 6.29 to go here in the first half. 12-11 now, Seahawks lead. 30-second timeout. Uh, Belle Frazier is so strong, and when she gets the ball, she's looking up court even before the first dribble. Uh, her eyes are up. She's looking for any uh, potential teammates ahead of her, which is rarely the case. Uh, and then when she gets to the glass, uh, her strength can overcome anybody else on the court. Seahawks starting off the second quarter with a 6-0 run, taking the lead. Shout out to Terry Bauer, one of the whole pack of Bowers listening to tonight's game. Tides have it to restart action here in the second quarter. 6.27 to go in the first half. Tides now trail by one. They have the ball. Megan Edwards, guarded by Renee Doss, drives left, gets by her, gives it over to Maxwell in the near corner. Cross court pass now up top to Tate McReynolds, who drives in the paint uncontested. Except for one reach in, so Tate McReynolds gets the and one. Foul going to be on Belle Frazier, her first personal foul, fourth team foul for the Seahawks. And Quincy Langworthy following along on KGHP. It is as stressful as it sounds on the air. Thanks for the tweet. Quincy Langworthy, a graduate of the Gig Harbor Tides program. Glad you're listening, Quincy. As Renee Doss pulls up for three, no good. Rebound, Bell Frazier jumps over Brenna Maxwell, turns around, and shot no good. Rebound, Brenna. 13 to 12, your score. Tides now with a one point lead and the ball. Tate McReynolds looks at a shot just inside the perimeter, decides to give it to Tia Berry. Hook shot in and out, pulled down by Bell Frazier. 5.45 to go here in the second quarter. Frazier taking it coast to coast, jumps over Tia Berry. Stops all of her momentum to put it up and in, giving the Seahawks the lead, 14 to 13. McReynolds now for Gig Harbor in the near side. Floats it into Abby Emery, but stolen away by Bell Frazier. Bell Frazier in every single passing lane tonight, it seems. Frazier drives left on Maxwell and dishes it into Karen McKinney underneath, shot blocked. And they're going to slam Brennan Maxwell with an over the back on Piper Bauer. Bauer to the free throw line to shoot two. Yeah, Maxwell a little too aggressive trying to block the shot from behind. But I'll tell you, if the tides don't stop uh, Belle Frazier from dribbling down the court, they need to slow her up somewhere as she crosses midcourt because she is just charging the glass, I'll tell you. Second team foul, or second personal foul on Maxwell. Eighth team foul for the tides. Shot no good from Bauer. She gets a second, though. Renee Doss and Karen McKinney checking out for the Seahawks. They're replaced by Lindsey Lobrovich and Taryn Richter, who's now in the lane, awaiting this Piper Bauer free throw. Second shot, also no good. Score remains 14 to 13. That was out of bounds, last touch by a Peninsula player. And we see uh, Gig Harbor basketball. Full quarter pressure being applied by the Seahawks. Ball inbounded to Maxwell. She's working on Papulus, met by Lindsey Lobrovich. Avoids the double team, gets it over to Megan Edwards. Now in the near corner to Abby Emery. Back out to Edwards. She's met by Lindsey Lobrovich, loses the handle on it, and backs it out. 13 to shoot for Gig Harbor. Abby Emery has a baseline. Back out to Taryn Richter. Into the near corner for Abby Emery for three air balls and into the hands of Lindsey Lobrovich. Lobrovich sprinting it up the court. She's guarded by Tia Berry. Up top now to Belle Frazier. She's guarded by Brenna Maxwell. Frazier gets a screen right, goes left, pulls up, elbow the free throw line, off the rim, off the glass, and into the hands of Abby Emery with the Tides basketball. Brenda Maxwell to take it up again, guarded by Papulus in the backcourt. Half court pass now to Megan Edwards, who drives in the paint, gives it over to Abby Emery, finds Brenda Maxwell, who drives in the paint, puts up a shot off the front of the rim, no good, but there's a foul underneath. We'll wait to see who it's on. Lots of Seahawks in the way of that shot. They're going to call Esther Papulus for the fifth Peninsula foul. 
first personal foul for Papulis. Brittany Maxwell to the line to shoot two to try to tie it up. Maxwell so creative. She wasn't even ready for that skip pass through the paint. Ended up in her hand, and she reacted instantly by taking it right to the rim. Maxwell, a 90% free throw shooter, sinks the first. Sydney Langworthy back in the game for the Tides. And Kiki Mamea waiting to check in. And she does. It's on the court for Gig Harbor. Kiki Mamea, Abby Emery, Brenna Maxwell, who's at the free throw line, Megan Edwards, and Sydney Langworthy. Langworthy with those two personal fouls. First shot from Max, or second shot from Maxwell, up and good. Tides now with the lead, 15-14. Esther Papulis and the Seahawks trying to take the lead back. Piper Bauer now at the near side, up top now to Frazier. Double teamed, gets it over to the far side for a Papulis. Puts up for three, no good, into the hands of Abby Emery. Edwards races by Lindsey Lobrovich, poked away by a reaching foul, they're gonna say. And the Boo Birds come out for Peninsula. Six team fouls now for the Seahawks. Second personal foul on Lavrovich. Make sure you stay tuned for halftime as we sat down with Lavrovich as well as Piper Bauer for tonight's halftime show. Maxwell inbounds to Sydney Langworthy in the near corner. Back over to Maxwell. She drives baseline, puts up a shot over three Peninsula defenders, but into the hands of Bell Frazier. Four minutes to go here in the second quarter. Frazier threads the needle, finds Bauer underneath. Shot no good, a little too strong off the glass into the hands of Sydney Langworthy. Langworthy dishes it over to Megan Edwards, gives it over to Abby Emery in the far corner. Now up top to Langworthy. Langworthy drives left. Back over to Emery now in the near corner. Into Maxwell, guarded by Papulis. And Maxwell threads it into Megan Edwards and she gets stopped by Lindsay Lombardis. Frazier now with the ball. She's working it up, turns around, puts it up off the glass, no good, pulled down by Kiki Mamea. And Megan Edwards gets it over to Brittany Maxwell. She'll jog it up the court. 3.20 to go here in the first half. Cross court pass. Brittany Maxwell finds Kiki Mamea underneath. Lots of contact, no foul. And Peninsula now with an opportunity to take the lead back. Lobrovich and Megan Edwards tying up. It'll be a jump ball. Lots of energy, as you would expect here in this Fish Basket basketball game. Unbelievable court vision by Maxwell on that last one. Pinpoint pass. She was well outside the three-point arc, and she saw her teammate standing unattended, weak side under the glass, and just a dime of a pass to her. Tides now with the ball. Just over three minutes to go here in the first half. They're up one, looking to extend that lead. Edwards drives baseline. Eventually gets it out to Sydney Langworthy. And now trying to find Kiki Mamea was Megan Edwards. But ball tipped out of bounds. It'll be Gig Harbor basketball under the basket with 16 to shoot. Edwards finds Abby Emery who puts up a shot. Gets swatted by Taryn Richter into the hands of Bell Frazier. Line up court pass to Papulis. Doesn't even need to take a dribble. But her shot is no good. Pulled down by Mamea for the tie. If some of these Seahawks could finish on the other end, uh, Frazier would have double-digit assists by now. Edwards gives it over to Brenda Maxwell up top. Pulls left. Puts up a jumper. No good into the hands of Bell Frazier. 2.30 to go here in the first half. Long up court pass to Papulis through her hands. She saves it. And stolen away by Maxwell, now into the hands of Sidney Langworthy. Gives it back over to Maxwell, one-on-one -on -one with Bell Frazier. Steps left. Love that matchup. Love that matchup. It turned out to be Maxwell against Frazier. And Maxwell stepped left, trying to get that shot off. But a foul on Bell Frazier. Maxwell will go to the line to shoot two. That was good basketball right there. The two exactly best players what you in the see. Two best players, perhaps, in the county going one-on-one. -on -one. Two of the greatest players of all time from either program going one-on-one -on -one here in a packed gym at Peninsula High School. Brenda Maxwell sinks the first, makes it 16-14, Gig Harbor leads. Frazier now with two personal fouls, something we'll watch for here. Hopefully she doesn't pick up her third in this Both half. Both teams now in the bonus. Sit down. And 17-14 oh. to score. But a foul on the shot. Not a shot, that was a circus shot. Give me an O, Renee Das. 
And shot will count, they're going to say. The original call was the referee said two free throws upcoming. But the shot did fall as Tate McReynolds checks in for the Tides, replaces Abby Emery. 17-16 year score. Renee Doss with an opportunity to tie it. Renee went uh, baseline, was actually behind the basket, I think, when she put that shot up with her and switched right to left hand. Threw the foul, sunk the basket. Free throw no good, but Brenda Maxwell and Tate McReynolds fighting for the rebound. It goes out of bounds off of one of them. It'll be Peninsula basketball, 214 left under their own basket. Lavrovich inbounds to Doss on the far side. Now up top to Papulis has it poked away but into the hands of Bell Frazier. Frazier steps left, backs out, guarded by Megan Edwards. Lots of contact, pokes it away but a foul they're going to say on Megan Edwards. And the bonus will make Bell Frazier go to the line for a one and one. Frazier was double teamed, one stripped the ball but one reached out and grabbed Frazier by the arm. Foul going to be on Megan Edwards, her first personal foul, 10th team foul for the Tides. Bell Frazier to the line after the double bonus will shoot two. Frazier looking to tie it up here with her first shot. Great game here tonight, folks. Great game. First shot up and good. 17 all, 2.04 to go here in the second quarter. Bell Frazier to the line to take the lead. Frazier, second shot up. And good. Peninsula leads 18-17 over Gig Harbor. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Tate McReynolds jogs the ball up for the Tides. Over to the far side. Works around the perimeter, drives in the paint, puts up a left hand. Shot blocked. Tate McReynolds screaming for a foul, but Lindsey Lavrovich racing the ball up court into the near corner. It's a Doss, weaves her way through three defenders, gets it out to Frazier for three. No good, pulled down by Maxwell. Up to Edwards. And now over to Tate McReynolds. Baseline finds Kiki Mamea underneath. Puts up a shot. Gets fouled. She'll go to the line. 4-2. Eighth team foul on the Seahawks. Foul going to be on number three, Renee Doss. Her second personal foul. Kind of laughing it off with Coach Schick. Kiki Mamea, the sophomore, to the line for Gig Harbor. First shot from Kiki up and good. We're tied at 18. Go ahead and tweet us at KGHPFM. Let us know how many lead changes you think we'll have tonight. We're not keeping track unless you are, so uh, let us know the right answer when we're done. And Kiki sinks the second. Tides now lead 7, 19 to 18. 130 to go here in the first half. Papulus takes it up for the Hawks. Papulus has the screen, gives it over to Bell Frazier, works it inside the paint. Nice Euro step. Shot no good. She gets her own rebound and drives right. Puts up an awkward shot over Kiki Mamea. That shot no good. And now into the hands of Lindsay Lavrovich on the far side. Cross court pass over to Renee Doss. Has a little bit of space, but she travels with it, trying to shake Sydney Langworthy with the Tides basketball in front of their own bench. You know, we talked about Maxwell or Frazier's strength getting to the uh, rack. I think she relies on that a little bit too much at times in traffic. She got a rebound and went, just tried to muscle the ball back towards the rim. Not a high percentage shot. Karen McKinney checking into the game for the Hawks, replaces Taryn Richter. Megan Edwards has it poked away by Lavrovich. Oh! A push, they're going to say, on Lavrovich. That'll be her third personal foul here in the first half. And Megan Edwards going to the free throw line, but uh, the wrong free throw line, she'll walk her way over to the other side of the court and shoot a one and one after the defensive foul. Substitution for Peninsula now as after that third personal foul, Lavrovich is replaced by Piper Bauer. Edwards to the line for a one and one for Gig Harbor, looking to extend this 19-18 lead. First shot up and good. 20 to 18 the score. On the court for the Tides. Maxwell, Langworthy, McReynolds, Kiki Mamea, and Edwards for Peninsula. McKinney, Bauer, Frazier, Papulis, and Doss. Second shot from Kiki Mamea, no good. They're correct to Megan Edwards, no good. And into the hands of Bell Frazier. She takes it coast to coast. Met by Kiki Mamea. Shot no good. Into the hands of Piper Bauer. And pass poked away by Edwards, but back into the hands of Papulis. And now Piper Bauer tripping over herself. Gets it over to Papulis, who drives in the paint. Puts up a shot. Nails it. So it goes to the line for the end one. Good use of the body by Esther on that one. She drove strong, knew she was going to get contacted. Held the ball just a fraction of a second longer in her right hand, drew the contact, sunk the shot. 
Nice shot, play by Papulus. Shot counts. We're tied at 20 as Taryn Richter checking in for Bell Frazier, who looks gassed, and I don't blame her. Lots of back and forth here in this one so far. Papulus with an opportunity to take the lead here with this and one free throw and off the back of the iron. Score remains 20 all. 42 seconds remains in the first half. Tides with an opportunity to take the lead. Edwards over to McReynolds on the near side over to Mamea in the near corner. And trying to find somebody inside eventually finds Maxwell. She turns around left, hits a, almost hits a jumper. And shot no good, tipped out of bounds by Sydney Langworthy. And the Peninsula basketball shot clock off. Check 26 that. 26 seconds left. It's going to be Tides basketball. One referee pointed Peninsula away. And the uh, one of the other referees signaling it went off Peninsula. But the Peninsula ref overruling, and it'll be Seahawk basketball. Shot clock off, 26 seconds left here in the first half. Good work by the officials to talk that over and get the call right. Viper Bauer walks the ball up court, 20 to go. She's met by Megan Edwards. Bauer into Papulis at the free throw line, puts up a shot. I don't know how she controlled that, but she put it up off the glass and in. 22-20 the score, less than 10 seconds to go. Inbound pass goes to Langworthy, and it'll be off her shin. Seahawk basketball, 2.7 left here in the first half. Peninsula with an opportunity to extend this two-point lead before halftime. Dosta inbound in front of the Gig Harbor student section. Watch for Populus here to break out. Ball goes to Populus, back over to Doss. Puts up a three, gets swatted by Brenda Maxwell, and that's how the first half's gonna end. After two quarters of play, Peninsula takes a 22 to 20 lead into the locker room. You're listening to Fish Basket Rivalry Basketball on KGHB FM. And again, your score at the halftime here at Peninsula High School for this Fish Basket matchup. Peninsula 22, Gig Harbor 20. Lindsey Labrovich and Piper Bauer have been tearing it up this year, sitting in the top 20 3A scorers in the state of Washington. We sat down to get, the know, to, get to know the future of the Peninsula Girls program in tonight's halftime interview. Here's how that conversation went. Uh, I've been playing basketball since I was four. I played all through middle school and two years in high school, and I still have two years left. And my two little brothers play. And uh, one of them wears your number, right? They both do. Nice, very cool. Is that like a family number, or is 21 just kind of a random number that just happened and now it's been turned into something? Uh, it's just a random number because Lindsay took my jersey last year, so I was stuck with number 21, so that's our number now. <laughs> All right, Lindsay, same question. What? How long have you been... Have you been playing basketball? Since like fourth grade. I don't know how old that is. Not four. <laughs> and then you're also a, a dual athlete, stud track and field runner, right? What events do you do? Okay, I do the 200, 400, 800, all the relays. I want to do the 100 this year. High jump, long jump. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, I want to do hurdles. But, yeah. <laughs> and it seems like that's kind of helped you in basketball, like a lot of breakaway points, lots of like driving, getting past people. Would you say that being a dual athlete has, has helped you in that? I mean, I guess so. They just tell me to get out and run. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, Piper, all season long, even last season, you've had a ton of family listening from Wisconsin. Anything you want to say to them? Just shout out to you guys for watching. What are you guys excited about going into playoffs? Winning. <laughs> I, I anticipate a lot of that. Um, you know, a lot of Tacoma Dome games, maybe. So, Piper, what are you excited about for playoffs? I'm just excited about winning yeah. and making it to the Dome. Seems like a one-track mindset. All throughout the season, what's kind of been the mentality of the team and, and you guys specifically as, as underclassmen but leaders? Just make sure everybody's doing their part, make sure they're working as hard as they can. So far, what's been your greatest basketball memory? I mean, so far... We sort of made it to state last year. I mean, it didn't quite feel like it, but, I mean, we could say that. Yeah, making it to state in, uh, was it 29 years? That was pretty, oh. pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, snapping the playoff drought, first time this millennium uh, that the Peninsula <laughs> girls team has been to state. Uh, this year, last year you were one game away from going to the Tacoma Dome. This year it's kind of the expectation. Has that been the expectation all season, is to reach the Tacoma Dome? Yes, even before the season started, he goes, March 2nd, that's the day we got to mark on the calendar. 
What's it been like uh, having a first-year head coach last year, your freshman years, and kind of growing up in this newer, different system? I don't know. We love him. He's a great guy. Really good coach. Looking forward, um, at the time of this interview, the Peninsula Girls program for the last four years hasn't beaten Gig Harbor. I'm sure that's going to change in the future. What are you guys working on to make sure that that gets changed? Just winning. <laughs> that's how it's going to change. <laughs> we win. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. I like it. So outside of sports, what do you guys like to do? Like, we see you guys running up and down the court, scoring lots of baskets, you know, passing the ball really well, unselfish play. What do you guys do when you're not on the court? We go over to Bell's house and play Super Mario Bros. I mean, it's mostly just sports. Sweet. All right, well, sophomore sensations, (laughs) Piper Bauer and Lindsey Lavrovich, thanks for sitting down with us here at KGHP for halftime. Thank you. Thank you. We've enjoyed watching these two play over the last couple of years and are excited to see what the next two years hold for them and the impact they'll have on the PHS girls basketball program. Stick around, we'll be right back with tonight's Lunchbox Laboratory trivia question as well as halftime stats and keys to the second half. You're listening to Fish Basket on KGHP. Welcome back to a packed Peninsula High School where the Peninsula Lady Seahawks lead the Gig Harbor Tides 22 to 20. Get your dialing fingers ready. The number to call is 253-857-3589 for tonight's Lunchbox Laboratory trivia question. When did the Peninsula Girls basketball team win their state championship? Call 253-857-3589 for your chance at a $25 Lunchbox Laboratory gift card and to help pay for a date with your favorite play-by-play girls broadcaster. If I said May, would I win? I just said the month of May. Well, actually, it would be March, so you'd be wrong. No, I think they play. It's March they? Madness, man. Oh, well, okay, all right. Hey, <laughs> shout out to Brooks Bauer. Uh, gave us a gave us a nice tweet here. Wish you could be here too, Brooks, but uh, you're missing quite a spectacle here. They brought in extra bleachers for this game, for both these games, and the the house is just packed. Yeah, we also hope you're staying warm out there, Brooks. Uh, if you're listening out in Wisconsin, um, we keep checking the weather and going, man, you know. 30 and overcast doesn't seem so bad. So 22 to, to 20 here at halftime, leading scorers, both Brenna and Bell with eight points. What's been the theme in the first half in this one? Well, I think that first quarter, uh, it was a tale of two quarters. The, the first quarter, Peninsula was just very disorganized on offense, I think. I think a big adjustment was made uh, as they came out with a lot more intensity the second quarter, and Bell Frazier with back-to-back uh, fast break opportunities where she just muscled her way right to the rim and really kind of set a new tone in that second quarter. It's it's really turned into something here. Packed house, lots of energy, two of the greatest players of program histories facing off against each other. You know, I, I, I don't even think I'm going out on a limb when I say this is the greatest matchup between these two teams of all time. Could be, could be, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, you know, the girls' basketball has come so, so far, even in the last uh, 15, 20 years. I can remember going to, to girls' games 20 years ago where, no kidding, you'd have more personal fouls than points for the game. So uh, the skill level, the athleticism, the smarts uh, is just off the charts different from even two decades ago. Yeah, and, and much, much different story than uh, the 2013 2014 season where Gig Harbor thrashed Peninsula 50 to 8. And now we got two teams that arguably very easily could uh, make their way into another matchup from or in the Tacoma. I hope that we're finding uh, that they're going to find their way to another matchup in the, in the what do they call it? The woodshed? The Tacoma Dome? The woodshed. That's that old Kevin Calabro term. <laughs> the wooden dome and we already have a winner for our trivia question Kristen from gig harbor wins tonight's lunchbox laboratory gift card she knew that peninsula girls won the state championship back in 1979 john manley where to be christina oh my bad we had a typo on the uh, announcement christina from gig harbor congratulations you just won 25 dollars off your next trip to lunchbox laboratory i'm in milkshake <laughs> and we're ready to go here to start the second half on the court for the Hawks. 
Mel Frazier, Taryn Richter, Esther Papulis, Piper Bauer, and Lindsey Labrovich. Cross court pass goes through Piper Bauer's hands and out of bounds. It'll be Gig Harbor basketball on the court for the Tides. They'll be going left to right to open things up here in the second half. Brennan Maxwell, Grace Neal, Megan Edwards, Sydney Langworthy, and Abby Emery, your starters. Langworthy up top, picks up her dribble, guarded by Piper Bauer over to the far side to Megan Edwards. She picks up her dribble, gives it over to Abby Emery up top, guarded by Frazier. Over to the near side to Sydney Langworthy, pulls up for three off the front of the rim, no good. Pulled down by Lindsey Labrovich in the hands of Bell Frazier. Frazier looking to extend this two-point Seahawk lead. Over to the far side now to Lindsey Labrovich, pulls up for three, shot no good in the hands of Sydney Langworthy. Langworthy gives it over to Megan Edwards. She's met by Labrovich in the backcourt. Crosses over, finds her way over to the near side, gives it over to Brenda Maxwell, guarded by Papulis. Maxwell gets a screen from Neal, drives left, and a give and go. Gives it in to Neal, puts it up and over. Kara McKinney, correction, Bell Frazier for two more points for the Tides. Yeah, tied at 22. Something you don't say very often over Bell Frazier. Bauer with some nice ball handles, but loses it into the hands of Megan Edwards. Quickly takes it up for the Tides. Down to the hands of Sidney Langworthy. Works over to the near side, finds Brennan Maxwell just inside the perimeter, off the back of the iron, no good. Into the hands of Taryn Richter, now Bell Frazier. She'll take it up for Peninsula. 6.35 to go here in the second or third quarter. As Frazier pulls up, Elva the free throw line, no good. Pulled down by Neal for Gig Harbor. Megan Edwards pushes it up herself, pulls up, elbow to the free throw line, no good, but pulled down by Sidney Langworthy. Now up top to Brennan Maxwell. She loses the handle on it, but a foul, they're gonna say, that's gonna be on Esther Papulis. First foul from either team in the second half. 6.17 to go here in the third quarter. Second personal foul on Papulis. Dides to inbound baseline under their basket. And inbound goes to Abby Emery, puts up a shot, rims in and out, and pulled down by Bell Frazier up to Lindsey Labrovich. Labrovich driving the paint herself, and puts up a shot, but gets fouled by Grace Neal underneath. Neal a little frustrated with herself. That'll be her third personal foul. As Lindsey Labrovich goes to the line to give the Seahawks the lead. I think Labrovich was, was, was flying during that. She, I swear to God, she flew about 15 feet from the outside. Uh, uh, edge of the court all the way to the rack there before drawing that foul. You know, I think if she leveraged herself right, if she uh, jumped off of Grace Neal, she easily could have dunked it, but her head could have hit the rim too. As Neal checks out, replaced by Tate McReynolds, both shots no good from Labrovich. Rebound, Brennan Maxwell. She's guarded by Papulis in the backcourt, fights her way across the free throw line, pulls that foot on the line and gets it to rattle in. Tides now lead 24-22, under six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Bell Frazier, guarded by Sidney Langworthy up top, gives it over to Renee Dawson on the near side. And a foul underneath, they're going to say, probably on Megan Edwards. And it is Edwards second personal foul. Edwards definitely tied her up. Didn't know if they're going to call a travel or the foul, but I'm, they, got, they got it right on that. Seahawks inbound. Get it into Frazier, guarded by Maxwell. Turnaround jumper off the rim, pulled down by Abby Emery for the Tides. Tate McReynolds on the far side gets it up to Langworthy. And into Abby Emery, gets it out. Baseline jumper from Tate McReynolds, no good, pulled down by Maxwell. Maxwell double team now on Richter. And shot no good, gets her own rebound. Second shot also no good, Brenna wanting contact. Coach Murray says get down the court, play some defense, and she does as Mel Frazier takes it up herself, drives in the paint, kicks it out to the far corner for Labrovich for three, no good. Pulled down by three tides all at once. Tate McReynolds going, coming away with it, and that foul is going to be on Esther Papulis. Silly foul by Papulis on that one. Uh, the tied player just barely starting up court on the edge, and uh, Papulis with a pretty blatant reach in there. So it'll be tides basketball when we resume play. Maxwell inbounds between the Peninsula cheerleaders in front of their student section. Now up to McReynolds on the far side, up top to Maxwell. Pump fake, drives left, weaves her way through two Peninsula defenders and in. Four point lead for the Tides. Maxwell so creative with the basketball. Big Harbor leads 26 22. They're on defense. Papulis over to the far corner to Labrovich. Students making some noise for Gig Harbor as Papulis up top. Drives left, in the paint, puts up a floater, no good, gets her own rebound, out to Doss up top. She drives, pulls up, 
Free throw line sinks it, and she's going for one more to the charity strike. Renee Doss shot that one from the waist, I'm sure of that. She was left all alone, drove into the paint, and shot it from about the hip, and it went in. 4.40 to go here in the third quarter. Doss trying to make this a one-point ball game for the Peninsula Seahawks, and does. 26-25, Tides lead. They're looking to extend this as Tate McReynolds takes it up for Gig Harbor. McReynolds up top. Looks left, finds Maxwell on the far side. Gets a screen from Emery. cross court pass over to the near corner to Langworthy. Now into Emery. Turnaround jumper is good. Terrific ball movement by the Tides. Outside triangle on the right side. Found finally the open uh, Tides player under the rack for the easy two. Bell Frazier over to Labrovich on the near side. Trying to cut into this three-point deficit. Frazier up top, guarded by Megan Edwards. She backs around, gets a screen from Taryn Richter. Cross court pass over to uh, Labrovich. 12 to shoot. Papulus drives baseline, loses the handle on it. Back over to Labrovich on the far side, eight to shoot. Taryn Richter pulls up for three. Off the back of the iron, no good. Saved in the corner by Papulus. Gets it over to Richter, but tying up was Richter and Sidney Langworthy. 3.52 to go. It'll be Tide's ball after the jump ball. Tia Berry and Lindsay Labrovich checking in. Megan Edwards and Esther Papulis taking a seat. McReynolds gets it up to Abby Emery. Now in the hands of Brenna Maxwell. She's guarded by Renee Doss, following her all the way up the court. Maxwell behind the back move, drives left, and stolen away by Bell Fraser. She gets it up to Renee Doss. Wild pass. Renee Doss still with some room and just gets it by a charging Tia Berry. If she got any kind of skin on that ball, it would have gone out of the gym. <laughs> but Renee Doss with two points makes it a one point game. 28 27. Tide still lead. They'll get the ball after this timeout. And that transition play was started with great anticipation from Belle Frazier. She saw the passing lane there, knew what the uh, Tide player was going to do, stepped in, got the ball, looked up ahead. We talked about having her eyes up as soon as she gets the ball, uh, sent it ahead uh, to, to her teammate for the easy bucket. 335 left here in the third quarter. How's our scoring doing? Who's the. Give us some scoring recap. Looks like Renee Doss just surpassed Bell Frazier with nine points for the Seahawks. And Brenna Maxwell, after four points in this second half, has 12. A one point ball game. Gig Harper, who trailed by two at halftime, now leads by one, 28 27. This is all you can ask for here at this rivalry fish basket game. End of the regular season, both teams at the top of the conference, both teams 12 and one. The winner walks away with the conference championship. Tides looking for their third consecutive South Sound Conference Championship. They haven't finished in anything but first place since joining 3A. And did I hear you say earlier that the uh, Seahawks seniors have never beat the Tides? They have never beaten the Tides. What an epic finish that would be here on the last regular season game for these Peninsula seniors. As pass intercepted by Bell Frazier, we're going the other way. Frazier with an opportunity to take the lead, drives the paint. Gets by a couple of defenders and puts wow. it home. Reverse lay-in. Bell Frazier makes it 29-28. Wow, Frazier with a beautiful right-handed reverse lay-in. Everybody thought she was going to dish it out to the side, but she continued to the rack and laid it up with the right hand. Emery's pass goes out of bounds. Tipped away by Renee Doss. Goes into the Gig Harbor student section. Substitution now. Megan Edwards checking in for Gig Harbor. She'll replace Tia Berry. Tate McReynolds to inbound in front of the Gig Harbor student section. Well represented here tonight. Good to see. Three minutes to go here in the third. Tides down one with the ball. McReynolds drives left, met by Doss. Cross court pass over to Abby Emery. Baseline jumper, air balls into the hands of Lindsay Labrovich. She races the ball up the court. Pulls up beyond the perimeter. Crossover on Edwards. Dishes it into McKinney. Out to Renee Doss for three. Off the back of the iron. Into the hands of Megan Edwards for Gig Harbor. Couldn't get a better look at a three than that. Over to the near side is Sidney Langworthy. Back over up top to Megan Edwards. Dishes it into Maxwell. Turns around. Puts up a shot. Gets fouled. Contact, they're going to say. Foul either on Renee Doss or Bell Frazier. It's going to be on Renee Doss. Third personal or third team foul for Peninsula. Three team fouls apiece. Third personal for number three, Renee Doss. And Doss definitely with the body on that pushed uh, Brenna off balance as she tried to throw up her shot. I think they're going to call it a shooting foul. She gets two. Maxwell ties it up at 29 after the first free throw. 
2.32 to go here in the third quarter. Maxwell's second shot up and good. 30 to 29, Tides now lead. Peninsula with the basketball. Play a hallmark of the Tides defense is getting back. You can see all the Tide players sprinting back on defense, even after the made free throw. Reminiscent of the Tony Bennett Cougar teams. As Piper Bauer directing traffic up top, she's got 14 to shoot. Floats it into Bell Frazier at the free throw line. Gets it over to the near corner to Lavrovich. Pulls up for three off the back of the rim and poked away and almost saved by Sydney Langworthy, but it goes out of bounds off of her. And the Peninsula basketball. Fresh shot clock, 2.07 to go here in the third. Tide's showing a zone defense on that last possession. Let's see if they stick with that. Peninsula trailing 30 to 29 with an opportunity to take the lead. Bauer up to Renee Doss into Frazier at the free throw line. Guarded by Megan Edwards. Backs her down. Gets it out to Piper Bauer for three. In and out. No good. Pulled down by Brenda Maxwell. Nearly trips, but regains her balance and gives it over to Megan Edwards who takes it for the Tides. Over to Tate McReynolds. Baseline jumper. Good. 32-29. Tides lead, Peninsula with the basketball. Bell Frazier, the senior captain, jogging the ball up the court. Frazier gets a screen from McKinney, goes right over to the far side to Lavrovich. Lavrovich back over to Frazier in the far corner. Drives baseline, met by Abby Emery, puts up a fadeaway jumper, good! Contact, but no foul. Bell Frazier makes it a one-point game, 32-31. Tides with the basketball and the lead. Abby Emery has it up top, gives it into Maxwell, drives, puts up a shot, gets fouled uh, by either Piper Bauer or Bell Frazier. And they're going to call Bell Frazier coming in from behind. Shot no good, but Brenda Maxwell, that 90% free throw shooter to the line for two. That's Frazier's third personal, something to keep an eye on here with a minute 13 re remaining in this third quarter. First shot from Maxwell, up and good, 33-31, Tides lead. Again, go ahead and follow us on Twitter. Go ahead and tweet at us. Let us know where you're listening from, who you're listening for, and what you think tonight's final score is going to be. As Maxwell sinks the second 34-31, Tides lead, Peninsula ball. Piper Bauer dribbles it across the Seahawk at center court here at a packed Peninsula High School. Lavrovich now up top. Minute to go over to Renee Doss. Back up top to Piper Bauer, or not Piper Bauer, Lindsay Lavrovich. She works right. Up top now to Frazier, 11 to shoot. Pulls up from distance. No good into the hands of uh, Tate McReynolds. Jim would have absolutely exploded. Bell Frazier pulled up from about five feet beyond the perimeter. Everybody holding their breath. But now Megan Edwards with it for the Tides. Into Maxwell. She's double teamed. Puts up a shot over Frazier. Gets it to fall. Two seconds separate the shot clock and play clock here in the final seconds of the third quarter. Bell Frazier behind the back move. Pull up jumper inside the free throw line. Good over two tides defenders. Maxwell versus Frazier. This is fun. 36-33 the score. Sydney Langworthy pulls up from downtown. She nails it. <laughs> from long distance. Give me an eight, Sydney Langworthy. Gig Harborside erupting. <laughs> 8.6 to go here in the third quarter. Tides now lead by 6, 39-33. Your play-by-play -play announcer erupted as well. <laughs> as Renee Doss finds some space in the paint. Shot off the rim, no good. Winding seconds of the third quarter. Shot will count for Maxwell. And just misses the half-court shot after three quarters of play. Gig Harbor leads 39-33. We'll be right back after this underwriter break with the final quarter of the regular season fish basket matchup right here on KGHP. Fourth quarter here at Peninsula High School. Tides lead by six. Peninsula with the basketball. And over to the far corner now to Doss. She drives in, weaves her way through two defenders. A shot, but a push probably on Abby Emery. We'll wait to see what the referee says. And he still hasn't shown a number. Uh, they're going to they're gonna say the foul was on number two, Tate McReynolds. Renee Doss to shoot two. And first shot, no good. And again, those free throws for Peninsula potentially becoming a factor in this one. Score remains 39-33, Tides lead. Renee Doss with one more and cuts the deficit to five for the Seahawks. 39-34, Brenna Maxwell guarded by Esther Papulis in the backcourt. 
Maxwell gives it over to Megan Edwards on the logo here at Peninsula. She pulls up just inside the perimeter, shot off the front of the rim into the hands of Bell Frazier. 7.35 to go in the fourth quarter. Frazier takes it up over to the near corner to Doss. She pulls up inside, swatted from behind by Brenna Maxwell. We'll go out of bounds, Peninsula basketball, 21 seconds remain. And Lavrovich the inbound baseline finds Kara McKinney underneath. She gets swatted from behind by Tate McReynolds. And the students of Gig Harbor coming alive. Lavrovich finds McKinney again, poked out by Brennan Maxwell. She thought Kara McKinney might have tipped it. You know, and she was right. That ball did touch McKinney's fingertips on the way out of bounds. Seahawks to inbound for a third time here at their own baseline. Ball now up top to Bell Frazier. Frazier crosses over on Edwards, gets it out to Doss. Doss drives right, floats one in to Karen McKinney, picked off by Maxwell. We're going the other way. Gig Harbor now with it. Up court pass from Edwards, finds Sidney Langworthy driving to the basket for two more points. 41 nice. 33. Gig Harbor leads Peninsula with the basketball. Just over seven minutes to go. Doss open. She's going to step inside the perimeter and hits the long jumper. 41 36. Gig Harbor leads with the basketball. Brenda Maxwell takes it over the logo. Guarded by Papulus, gets a screen up top, met by Lindsey Lobrovich, loses the handle on it, cross-court pass over the far side, now into the hands of Sidney Langworthy, pulls up just inside the perimeter, no good. Pulled down by Bell Frazier. Frazier takes it all the way up court, guarded by Sidney Langworthy, and it'll be poked out of bounds by Langworthy. It'll be Peninsula basketball, 6.36 to go here in the fourth quarter. Langworthy initiating a lot of body contact on Frazier. She brought the ball down, surprised there wasn't a call on that. Still remains Seahawk ball. Lindsey Lavrovich gives it to Esther Papulis, has some space in the paint, puts up an awkward shot, no good. And it'll go out of bounds, last touch by Papulis, it'll be Gig Harbor basketball. Abby pa Emery doing a good job of getting in the way of that shot and not collecting that foul. Papulis anticipating the contact, that's what altered her shot, no contact made. Brendan Maxwell finds Sidney Langworthy, driving to the hoop, puts it up off the glass, too strong, no good. Gets her own rebound, gets it out to Maxwell. And poked away, free ball, and eventually controlled by Brenna. Maxwell crosses over, drives right to the near side. Over to Tate McReynolds, finds Abby Emery underneath, and she moves her pivot foot. Just a little too much momentum going towards the rim, and it'll be a travel, Peninsula basketball. I'll tell you what, nobody's working harder on defense right now than Esther Papkis. I've watched her in the last two possessions. She is putting out maximum effort. She's getting a well-deserved break right now. Papulis subbed in for by Piper Bauer. She's done a great job trying to defend the state-leading scorer, Brenna Maxwell, for 3A. Piper Bauer takes it up, met by Sidney Langworthy. Over to the near side to Doss. Doss looks in. Yeah, works around the perimeter, finds Lavrovich on the far side. She's guarded by Langworthy up top to Piper Bauer with some space. Tries to feed it into Karen McKinney, has it poked away. But a travel as Karen McKinney and, losing her balance and, and dragging that pivot foot. That's the correct call. The travel occurred before the contact. So very hot in the gym here, very cold in Smithfield, Virginia. That's where Wes Smith is listening in. Thanks for listening here on KGHP, Wes. Grace Neal into the game for the Tides, replaces Emery as Sidney Langworthy gets the ball inside. Out to Maxwell for three. No good. Off the front of the rim, pulled down by Grace Neal, poked out. And last touch by Renee Doss. It'll be Gig Harbor basketball. 5.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. Tides lead by five. Score 41-36. Inbound pass goes to Grace Neal up top. Around the horn to Megan Edwards into Brenda Maxwell. She's guarded by Papulis, who's back in the game. Shot no good. Gets her own rebound out to Langworth in the far side. Up top to Lang uh, Megan Edwards. Finds Grace Neal all alone. Turnaround jumper. Puts it up off the glass. And in two more points. 5.20 to go. Bell Frazier takes it up for the Seahawks with a seven-point deficit. Frazier drives left around to the near corner. Gives it over to Lavrovich. She drives baseline and swatted from behind, but a foul on Brenna Maxwell. They're going to say her arm caught Lavrovich's head. Lavrovich to the line to shoot two, trying to cut into this 43-36 gig harbor lead. Tell you what, Maxwell's got to be a little careful. A little too much emotion after uh, protesting that call. Slammed the ball down on the court. Referee kind of gave her that second look. Right on the verge of a tee there for Brenna. Lavrovich, her shot up and good. Makes it a six point game, 43-37, 5-10 to go here in the fourth quarter. Yeah. 
Second shot from Langworthy, or Lavrovich, no good. And into the hands of the Tides, Megan Edwards. Double team to the backcourt, gets it up to Grace Neal, now in the hands of Sidney Langworthy. Langworthy gets it back up top to Megan Edwards, has a lot of daylight. Decides to give it over the near side to Tate McReynolds. McReynolds back up top to Edwards, 14 to shoot. Over to the far side to City Langworthy. Lots of contact from Bell Frazier, no foul. Langworthy picks up a dribble, finds Grace Neal under the basket. Too strong to the rim, shot no good. And a foul, it's going to be an over the back on Grace Neal, trying to get that rebound from Renee Doss. And those two tangled up in the first matchup, resulting in a Doss four-game suspension. As Grace Neal picks up her fourth personal foul with 4.46 to go. And that was a frustration foul. She was frustrated she missed that open look, and she went right for the rebound and uh, just wasn't going to give up. Fabulous taking his seat, replaced by Piper Bauer. Renee Doss to take it up for the Seahawks. 4.42 to go here in the game. 43-37 the score. Peninsula trails. They have an opportunity to cut into this deficit. Bauer takes a three from the near side. No good. And tipped up a few times into the hands of Renee Doss. She puts up a shot. Too much skin as the ball was controlled by the ball was controlled by Gig Harbor. They tried to pass it up to Maxwell, intercepted by Lavrovich. She drove to the paint, but there was Grace Neal to collect her fifth foul. Hard contact as both players hit the hit the floor audibly. Kind of the gym went silent for a second to see if either of those players was going to be injured. And after all that mess, Piper Bauer will go to the line to shoot two. Correction, it's a one and one. It'll be a one and one non-shooting foul. They're gonna say Piper Bauer with those multicolored shoes puts up the first and sinks it. Five point game, 43-38 the score. Esther Papulis waiting to check in for Piper Bauer. But Bauer with a second free throw attempt on the way, and good. Substitution now as Papulis is able to check in for Piper. Four point ball game, 422 to go here in the fourth. Good Big Harbor leads, 43-39. Good, good minutes for Bauer off the bench there. Good, very productive in her time on the floor. Ball inbounded to Megan Edwards, picks up her dribble in the backcourt, met by Kara McKinney. Up now to Tate McReynolds, Tides still haven't gotten it across the court, and now they do. Over to the far side to Megan Edwards. 19 to shoot for the Tides. Over to the far corner, right in front of the Peninsula band to Tate McReynolds. Back over to Edwards. Edwards guarded by Lavrovich. She drives baseline, has some space, puts it up off the glass and in. For she two was more. left alone on the switch, and the baseline was wide open for the running right hander. A nice cut from Edwards makes it 45 39 as Papulus drives baseline. But they're going to say she travels with it. And it'll be Gig Harbor basketball looking to extend a six point lead. Full court press upcoming for the Seahawks. They're still in that man defense. Edwards takes the ball across the half court line, met by Lavrovich. Drives left, has some room in the paint, wants to give it over to Abby Emery, but ball deflected off of a Peninsula player. That's Renee Doss. It'll be Gig Harbor basketball under the rim. 3.42 to go. Tides lead by six. Tate McReynolds to inbound baseline. McReynolds up top to Megan Edwards, has some space. Back into McReynolds, she's guarded by McKinney. Puts up a left-handed hook shot, gets it to fall. Traveled all the way around the rim before finding the bottom of the cup. 3.30 to go. Peninsula needs to cut into this eight-point deficit. Frazier up top, over to Lavrovich on the far side. Gets a screen from Frazier, works left. Over to Frazier in the far corner. She drives, baseline. Weaves her way through a couple times. Defenders in, in for two points. Timeout, Mike Schick. Full timeout, 3.17 to go, six-point game. And this is where somebody like Belle Frazier really needs to step up and be the leader that she has been. She's always been good for it. And uh, we expect to see a lot more of her in the final 3.17 of this ball game. This is exactly what you would hope for tonight. A relatively close game, lots of energy, very fast-paced, lots of emotion, lots of drama. And this is only part one of a two-part series we got. Don't forget, the boys are up next. Yeah, I Kelly hear they're Busey. quite good, actually, yeah. Yeah, they are pretty good. Gig Harbor looking to get into the regional playoffs in that fifth seed, either with a win tonight or a North Thurston loss. And that game will be broadcasted by the Kelly Busey. And you're going to hang around for that one yourself, too? You know, I... <laughs> 
If my voice holds up, yeah, That's sure. Right. I, I might be able to. Getting some funny reactions to your uh, <laughs> Sydney Langworthy, I think it was, three-pointer earlier. Oh, yeah. yeah. I identify with Oprah on that one, Quincy. Yeah. On the court for Gig Harbor, Mick Reynolds, Maxwell, Edwards, Emery, and Langworthy. For Peninsula, Frazier, Bauer, Doss, Papulus, and Lavrovich. Tides to inbound, they're up six. With just over three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Tate Reynolds needs to inbound it, finally does, into the hands of Abby Emery. Back over to McReynolds. Tough full court pressure being applied by the Seahawks. They're active. Emery There's with it. a double dribble, and she knew it. Mental mistake. Turns the ball over to Peninsula. They have an opportunity to cut into this six-point deficit, 47-41. Piper Bauer. Passes the ball up to Renee Doss. She cuts left in the paint. Puts up a shot around Emery. No good. Air balls into the hands of Brenda Maxwell. Maxwell up to Edwards. And she takes it across the logo here at center court. Picks up her dribble. Gives it over to Maxwell. Under three minutes to go. Maxwell drives left. Gets it out to Langworthy for three on the far side. Off the back of the rim. High rebound. Goes into the hands of Piper Bauer. 2.45 left. And into Papulus. Puts up a floater. No good. Abby Emery trying for the rebound, gets it into the hands of Sydney Langworthy. Up now to Megan Edwards. And she slows things up over to Brenda Maxwell on the near side. She's double teamed by Papulus and Bauer and puts it up over both of them and in for two more points. 49-41, eight-point game. Frazier trying to make this closer for the Seahawks. Over to Bauer for the near side for three! And she switches it home! Mike Schick with a quick timeout wants to preserve some precious few seconds as we wind down the clock here. 2.15 on the game clock. Mike Schick wants to save those three or four seconds it would have taken for Gig Harbor to get the ball back in bounds. Piper Bauer clutch makes this a five-point game. 49-44, 2.15 left here in the in the final quarter of regulation. You know, I saw it in Frazier's eyes when she was bringing the ball up court last possession. She's going to be on a mission. You watch her. Tides will inbound after the 30-second timeout for Peninsula. You know, on the, the Tides' last possession, I think Coach Edwards was calling for uh, them to get a little deeper into the shot clock, kind of shorten the game. But, boy, when Brennan Maxwell has that open of a look, uh, may as well let her sink it home. McReynolds gets it in to Megan Edwards for the Tides. Poked away by Bell Frazier. Gets it to Doss right under the hoop. And it's a three-point game. Two minutes to go. Gig Harbor with the ball. Megan Edwards gives it over to Brennan Maxwell in the backcourt. Maxwell met by Bell Frazier and Esther Papulis. Up now to Megan Edwards. Over to the far corner to Tate McReynolds. Finds Sydney Lane with the other rim. Misses the shot. Gets her own rebound. Triple team gets it out to Brennan Maxwell. Over to Megan Edwards. Three-pointer. No good. Pulled down by Emery for the Tides. A third chance here for Gig Harbor as Brenna Maxwell works it around the perimeter. Guarded by Bell Frazier over to Tate McReynolds. Baseline jumper off the back of the yard, no good. Pulled down by Frazier and a foul. They're gonna say on Gig Harbor, looks like Tate McReynolds, correction. That's gonna be Megan Edwards with the personal foul. Her full personal eighth team foul for Gig Harbor. 136 to go in the fourth quarter. Students for Peninsula going nuts. And look who strolls to the free throw line in clutch time. Bell Frazier with an opportunity to make this a one point game with a one and one opportunity here. 49-46 your score. Only one player in the paint for Peninsula to rebound as Frazier. First shot up and good. Two point game, 47-49. Timeout, Gig Harbor, full timeout. Oh boy. I think the message that uh, Coach Murray's going to deliver to her Tides team is to slow the ball down. On that last possession, they were relentless on getting shots off, and they got three opportunities. But I think uh, the Coach Edwards would, or uh, Murray would much rather have brought the ball out top and burned some seconds off the shot clock. You know, I just felt a cold breeze. I think that was Belle Frazier kind of walking over here. Ice in her veins. She's Clutch pretty free cool. Throws. Yeah. She'll have one more upcoming after the second half of this one and one. Again, 136 to go in the game. 49-47. This game decides who wins the South Sound Conference in this awesome fish basket rivalry game. Gig Harbor, Peninsula. Defending state champs, team with an opportunity to really go deep in the Tacoma Dome Peninsula. 
And if you couldn't be here in this terrific high school athletic atmosphere, uh, we're glad you're listening here on KGHP. Jim is packed. Two-point game now. Bell Fraser stands at the free throw line trying to make it a one-point game. 49-47. Frazier, the senior captain at the line, shooting a second, is good. One point ball game. 136. Ball inbounded to Maxwell, over to McReynolds. Up now to Emery. Emery double teamed in the backcourt, over to McReynolds. Over to Megan Edwards, tipped up by Lauren and she on it. A foul called though, and that might be Edwards' fifth personal foul. Lots of noise being generated in this in this game. I don't think they realize that there's no backcourt violation in terms of time. And Megan Edwards, the second tied player to foul out in this one. Labrovich to the line to shoot a one and one to potentially take the lead. Well, this uh, possession started with Lindsey Labrovich and uh, Bell Frazier applying tenacious backcourt pressure and Labrovich stretched and got a fingernail on the basketball at the top of its arc. Uh, to pull it back down before she was fouled. First shot, no good on the one and one. Score remains 49-48, Tides lead. Tate McReynolds taking it up. Now into the hands of Brenna Maxwell. Maxwell over to the far side, over to Sydney Langworthy. Langworthy back over to Maxwell, guarded by Frazier. Over to Abby Emery in the near side, over to Tate McReynolds in the near corner. Up top now to Bell Fra er, Brenna Maxwell in a three and a key violation of Kiki Mamea. Foul on the weak side, a loose ball of foul away from the action. A three in the key. Three in the key, okay, away from the action though. 106 to go, Peninsula down one, they have the ball with an opportunity to take the lead. Papulus replaced by Piper Bauer. The energy in this gym is crazy right now. Bauer to take it up, over to Doss. Doss back over to Bauer. Bauer up top. Met by Maxwell, cross-court pass over to Doss. She has some room in the paint, decides to drive. Puts it up in here! Renee Doss with a strong drive. 50 to 49, ties with it now. And Langworthy, picked up by Bell Frazier. Maxwell trying to re-control it, and it goes out of bounds. Peninsula basketball, 41 seconds to go. They have one point lead, and they'll be inbounding at half court. Timeout, Gig Harbor. Great, great defensive pressure by Bell Frazier. She's got the biggest smile of all in that Seahawk huddle. Peninsula seniors with an opportunity to get their first win over rival Gig Harbor in their four years as Seahawks. What a great game. It was only just moments ago that the Seahawks were down by eight. Now they enjoy that one point lead with 41 seconds to go, and they have the basketball. 50 to 49, crunch time. Peninsula to inbound, they're in the bonus. Doss to inbound to the left of the scorer's table. Into Piper Bauer. Bauer guarded by Langworthy. Gets past her. Over to Renee Doss into the near corner to Labrovich. Labrovich guarded by Emery out to Doss. 19 to shoot over to Bauer up top. Bauer guarded by Langworthy. Now over to the near side to Renee Doss. Doss out back up top to Bauer. Eight to shoot. Bauer behind the back moves. Gets some space over to Bell French and pulls up from deep. Air balls it and it goes out of bounds with the shot clock violation. 10.4 seconds left. Gig Harbor to inbound. Both teams with two timeouts. And Coach Murray elects to take one here. Full timeout, 10.4 left. Gig Harbor down one. They'll have the ball. What a defensive stand we're looking for from the Seahawks on this one. Uh, of course, look for the ball to pass through the hands of either Langworthy uh, or Brenna Maxwell, of course, the superstar for the Tides. Maxwell with an even 20 points on the night. 12 of which coming in the second half. Bell Frazier with 18. Renee Doss for 16. Uh, this is what you dream about. 10.4 seconds to go. Seahawks up by one. 50 to 49, a near mirror image of our final score only a couple weeks ago. 
This is the kind of stuff that you dream about as a kid, going to sleep, visualizing this moment. Who will get the ball from Gig Harbor? Will it be Maxwell, Langworthy? The classic question, do you want the ball uh, down by one or do you want to be on defense up by one? And we'll see as both teams break out of the timeouts. Everybody on their feet here at Peninsula High School. 10.4 to go. If you're not tuned into KGHP right now, you're doing it wrong. Langworthy to inbound. Gets it into Tate McReynolds. Eight to shoot. Ball tipped up. It's thrown away by Bell Frazier, but out of bounds. It'll remain tied. Basketball 5.4 to go. Bell Frazier came out of nowhere and almost kept that ball uh, on her fingertips as it was hovering above the scoring table. Timeout, Gig Harbor. That'll be their last timeout. 5.4 to go. Tides to inbound again, but this time from half court. They're going to have the ball just essentially in front of the scoring table, maybe on the uh, Peninsula bench side of the table. Three quarters of the court to go. Man. High school sports, huh, Chance? Oh, yeah, and this is just round one. We got the guys game coming up next. Stick around for this uh, that matchup between the boys uh, varsity teams in this fish basket night. Everybody on their feet here in an overcapacity Peninsula High School. 50 to 49. Some, Peninsula leads. Some, in Harbor to inbound with 5.4 to go. Some nervous looking Tides fans, though, a lot of them with their arms folded over their chest. The Seahawks fans are all jumping up and down for joy. Everybody's got a cell phone in their hand, too, to record these final seconds. This last five seconds will decide who wins the South Sound Conference. Peninsula students making all the noise. Sydney Langworthy to inbound, guarded by Renee Doss. Gets it in. Puts away by Austin Pablo with the foul before the shot from Maxwell. No foul, you're going to say. Time runs out. Peninsula wins conference. They're going to put some more time back on the clock. Papulus did not make the shot before she was fouled. They're going to put time back on the clock. Probably about two or three seconds left. Papulus to the line to shoot one and one. I think that might be a shooting it might foul. Be the tenth, it might be the tenth team foul. There you go, double, okay, the double bonus. And it, it will be the tenth team foul. It'll be the double bonus, so Papulus will shoot two. 2.8 seconds on the clock. Foul gonna be on Britta Maxwell, her fourth personal foul. Intentional foul on the court. And they're going to say it's a technical foul? They're going to say foul? it's a flagrant foul, flagrant foul, two-shot foul. Yeah, thank you. And first shot no good from Papulus. I didn't quite but see it as a flagrant foul. It was nor intentional. Did I. It, was, but it was 100% intentional, but the Peninsula Seahawks will get the ball back. Papulus misses her flagrant. second. So Peninsula to inbound. 2.8 seconds left. 2.8 seconds left. Timeout, Peninsula. I, I still don't know about that flagrant foul. I think Brennan Maxwell doing the wise thing, trying to just grab the waist of Papulus, but regardless, a, uh, a flagrant call. And Peninsula will have it up one with 2.8 to go. They will have it on the baseline under the Tides goal. So unless there's a, some really strange play that happens here, it looks like Peninsula can just inbound the basketball and hold it. Just cover it up, whoever gets possession, and the game would be over. I think if you're Gig Harbor, anybody but Brenna Maxwell needs to foul. You know, e anybody, even Maxwell at this point. 2.8 to go. Yeah, can't afford to burn any time. 2.8 seconds. Grace Neal and Megan Edwards fouling out for the Tides in this one. As the Seahawks come back on the court to much applause. Give us your thoughts after the game on KGHP. Here we go, final 2.8 seconds. Renee Doss to inbound for Peninsula. She gets it in to John, er, Piper Bauer and she gets fouled immediately by Sydney Langworthy. 2.0 on the clock. And that'll be Sydney Lang with his third personal foul. Piper Bauer to the line. She's been clutch tonight. 
Okay, interestingly, Peninsula players are back. They should be up trying to contest a full court three point shot that could tie or uh, win this game. So, first free throws missed. Bauer misses her first. Still a one point game with two seconds remaining. Bauer, second shot on the way is good. Timeout, Peninsula. That'll be their final timeout. 2.0 on the clock, 51-49 the score. So we know the Tides will have to get the ball and immediately get off what's going to amount to about a three-quarter court shot, I'm guessing. you got to expect the full court press. Yeah, so I, certainly no fouls. That's, a, that's the first word, then the last words out of Coach Schick's mouth. No fouls from his Seahawks squad. Again, give us your thoughts after the game on Twitter. Use the uh, KGHP FM tag on that. Final two seconds of the game. Tate McReynolds heaves the ball up court into Maxwell, pulls up for three. No good! And the scoop strikes the court. The Peninsula Lady Seahawks win the conference for the first time in 22 years. And they get the one seed heading into the regional tournament. Maxwell got the shot off in time, just went wide right, not by far. Final score, 51-49. Peninsula Seahawks avenge their earlier loss and win this version of the Fish Basket. Absolute redemption, the seniors' first win over rival Gig Harbor in their high school careers in epic fashion. Clinching the South Sound Conference. Tonight. Let's make some noise for both teams, they played hard. And Brenda Maxwell and Bell Frazier hugging it out at half court. And it's just been announced, Peninsula Girls, the South Sound Conference. Again, final score, the Peninsula Lady Seahawks 51, Gig Harbor 49. And we will, can we recap some scoring and then we're gonna to get to a John Manley interview. Leading scores for the Tides, Brenda Maxwell with 20. Tate McReynolds and Sydney Langworthy with eight. For the Seahawks, Bell Frazier led the way with 18 points and Renee Doss right behind her with 16. And again, your final score, Peninsula winning the South Sound Conference over rival Gig Harbor. Final score, 51-49. And we'll go ahead and queue up an interview we did uh, earlier this week with John Manley, uh, the, sp the sports editor for the Peninsula Gateway newspaper. Very familiar with all of the uh, high school sports teams. So if we have that interview ready to go, let's turn it over to uh, the Walrus. And, and, uh, Thank you for your Alongside Kelly Busey, this is Chance Busey signing off for the girls game. Stick with us right after this halftime or pre or post between game interview. <laughs> Words are hard right now, man. A lot of energy's going. But right after this interview, we've got the guys game coming up next. You're listening to Fish Basket Basketball on KGHB-FM. 